Welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back with another video, of course, on Wrexham AC. We're back for another video of the 21 videos in 21 days. Today's an interesting one. Today is a video that some of you have actually asked for and, you know, I've taken on board. I've taken these ideas on board and it is a season recap so far. We're going to be talking about everything that's happened in Wrexham AFC season and how we have started life in the EFL. And like I said, before every video, get down there, click the red subscribe button if you haven't already. The goal is to hit 20k before the end of 2023, so any support is massively appreciated. And let's get talking about the season recap so far. So yeah, I think we've had a fairly good start to the season and I think it's only right that we do discuss the success that we've had on and off the pitch. So yeah, we're going to be getting straight into it. As it stands now, I'm sure this video will come up after we've played maybe two league games. But as it stands, we're currently sat in fourth place. We've won nine, drawn six, lost three. We've scored 34 goals and conceded 29. So after a strange start to the season, we have seemed to have sort of found our stride, sort of adapted to life in League 2 so far. And of course, I think finding our stride is the right words to say because we're dabbling in and around those automatic promotion spots. And of course, with 15 years away from Football League, football at the Kairas, it was a very surreal moment seeing us back, although we didn't start it the way we wanted to. I mean, seeing us kick an EFL football was a moment in itself and... I've been very, very happy with our season so far. Now, we're going to be talking about the opening five games that we did have in the League 2 season. Now, it was a very strange start. You know, it was sort of a, how on earth are we going to cope with the amount of goals that are going in? And are we going to be able to adapt to the quality from the National League to League 2? Because there is a big gap. There is a big, big gap. We played bottom of the league, Sutton United. You know, they gave us a really, really tough game. And you think last year when we played bottom of the league, we probably won five or six nil. So, you know, it is very, very tough. And I think the people that do say there's not a big quality gap between the National League and League 2, I totally disagree. I think the top two teams in the National League maybe could be challenging for top 10. But apart from that, the quality gap is very, very big. So in our opening five games, we won one, drew three, lost one, scored 14 goals and conceded 14. So five games in, we had a zero goal difference. And you might think, oh, we might have scored five, conceded five, but we'd scored 14 and you think, oh my God, we could be top of the league. But no, we've conceded 14 as well. So I think this is possibly the strangest start a team has ever had to a League Two season. And like I said, we started off the season with a 5-3 heavy defeat at home to MK Dons. And I think it definitely did leave a few fans worried because Jonathan Lecco, Mo Iser for MK Dons, fast, pacey strikers, both at the peak in their career, they were very, very, very good. And they absolutely destroyed our defence. They put five past us. Isa and Lecco absolutely ran the show, but we followed up with a decent point and performance away at AFC Wimbledon. I think that was definitely a sigh of relief when we did pick up that point away from home because after that absolute demolition at home to MK Dons. If we followed up with another high scoring loss against Wimbledon, I think questions would have been asked about the team and the squad, but we never had questions. It was a 5-3 defeat. The fans knew that this was the start of an important season and the start of, some could say, a long season, but we know that we're going to have these losses along the way and it just coincidentally fell on the opening day of the season. But like I said, we followed up good away point at Wimbledon and then what followed after Wimbledon was pretty, pretty, odd to say the least. So in the next four days we faced Walsall at home and Swindon Town at home. You know Walsall you think could get three points there, Swindon maybe not so much but we have the quality to get the three points against them. We beat Walsall at home 4-2 on the Tuesday night and then followed up with a 5-5 draw at home to Swindon. So that's nine goals scored and seven goals conceded in two games. And of course, we know after that 5-5 draw against Swindon, it was Ben Foster's last game. So it was only a matter of games after starting the season that Ben Foster thought it was time to hang up the boots and retire, which, you know, was disappointing. He was absolutely adored by the fans but of course if Foster wouldn't have retired we wouldn't have had Arthur a conquering goal so it swings around us but yeah Foster retired after that game and then of course we picked up that point away at Barrow and then the important part of sort of the opening stage of the season was deadline day which can only mean one thing there were signings made from Wrexham AFC we made two deadline day signings so like I said after Foster's retirement it came to Parkey's attention and it caused Phil Parkinson to go out 
on the hunt and on the search for a new goalkeeper and that is when he stumbled across our six foot six shot stopper Arthur Oconquo. We've got him on loan until the end of the season from Arsenal. That was a good signing and then obviously our first signing of the transfer deadline day was George Evans from Millwall who has been absolutely phenomenal since signing for Wrexham AFC. So we had two transfer deadline signings. It should have been three. Luke Armstrong should have been coming through the door to sign for Wrexham AFC but we know what happened there. If you don't know what happened go and check out on my channel. The less said about that the better. We saved 500k on him but after transfer deadline day we went on a good string of form. We picked up three consecutive wins in the league which were Tramir Rovers away which which we won 1-0, Doncaster at home 2-1, Grimsby Town at home 3-0, before coming up against our toughest test of the season yet, Stockport County. Now, I know what you're thinking, I know you know what happened in this game, but yeah, there was a lot of hype going into this game. It was an early season clash, so we were all looking forward to this one. I think it's fair to say we expected a tough game you know i think before the game i'd have accepted a defeat you know although we want to win every game in front of us i think a defeat wouldn't have been that bad of a loss away at stockport county you're expected to go up as champions but i don't think anyone expected it to end 5-0 to the hatters we got absolutely battered at edgeley park but I think this was sort of a turning point in our start to the League 2 season. Although we got humiliated against Stockport County, there was almost a sense of we've got this far and we've got this far on the journey of Robin Ryan. We've got to League 2 and it seems too early to be jumping on the players' backs, to be jumping on Parky's back and having a go on social media. Although you can give constructive criticism on social media, you know, after that game there was a lot of criticism, but I think this definitely did give the players sort of a, not a wake-up call, but the realisation that we are fully behind them. We are fully behind these players and managers and staff through thick and thin and we understand that results like this are going to occur in this season and we're not going to win every game 3-4-0 like we sort of did in the National League. We are going to suffer setbacks and we are going to have games where we are going to come out as the losers so I think our support ever since that Stockport County game has massively helped the players and has had a huge impact on the results ever since then and all these players that are playing for Wrexham absolutely love the club 100%. They know the fans, they know what the fans expect of them and like like previous seasons where you know you could have your questions about some certain players not to name names but everyone that is a Wrexham player at the minute you know loves the club they understand the club's vision they understand the supporters which I think is vital and I think ever since that Stockport County game it has changed us as a team for the better. Since that Stockport County game we have only lost one league game ever since then and we followed up with two consecutive draws against promotion rivals Crew Alexander 3-3 at home and Mansfield where we did pick up a point in the 0-0 away draw. Now 3-3 against Crew, you know it was an early red card which sort of changed the game and the team really had to dig deep to get that point in the end and of course it was a 95th minute Stephen Fletcher header and you know we came from behind three times in that game to get a point which shows the resilience we have in this team this shows the character of the players and you know Mansfield away was a good point not an impressive performance you know it wasn't the greatest we could have played but hopefully looking back on it at the end of the season it will be a good point and a point that was key in our promotion to League One. That's what we can hope. We can keep our fingers crossed when saying that. Following on from those two draws, we then picked up maximum points, six out of six, at home to Salford City, 3-2, and Crawley Town away, 1-0. I still cannot get my head around that 3-2 home win against Salford City. Like, it will never sink in. What was it, like two goals in 40 seconds or something? It was absolutely ridiculous. And this does lead us on to our recent five league fixtures, which I think, in my opinion, were some of the toughest games we could have played in like a small period of time. We played Bradford City, we played Sutton United, we played Notts County, we played Gillingham. And we played Accrington Stanley. Now Bradford City away, 1-1. We got the point. Sutton United at home, we won 2-1. Notts County away, we won 2-0. Gillingham at home, we won 2-0. And Accrington Stanley away, we lost 2-0. But 10 points out of 15 is very, very good. Now looking back to a month when we were looking at these fixtures, you know, if you just said we'd have got 10 points out of this, I just said I've been very, very happy with it. You know, there were some tough games here and we've put in some really good performances to get the results that we do want 
out of these fixtures. Notts County, for example, what a performance. Gillingham at home, we were missing two of our key players, multiple players out through injury. We got the win, 2-0 at home. They had a great start to the season, so that's a really good win. Bradford away, what an occasion that was, playing in front of 20k. Could we have got the win? Probably, but looking back, a point was sort of a fair result I'd say and obviously Sutton United 2-1 a late winner showed our resilience Accrington away 2-0 the less said the better about that but to me the impressive thing about this is the back-to-back -back wins against Notts County and Gillingham now that's the indication to me that we will definitely be challenging for promotion come the end of the season we've shown that we can beat some of the top teams and I think it's impressive how well the team has done so far this season and I must give my kudos to Notts County Stockport County the recently promoted to teams to League 2 are all set in the League of Fire so well done to them we're going to be giving my sort of my stats so far this season my season rating for Exum 4 out of 5 definitely 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 it's not been perfect obviously the perfect season would be top of the league and that would have given a 5 out of 5 best win I've said 2-0 away win at Notts County that was Probably the best away game we'll get all season just for how well we played in that game considering we were coming up against a team that we'd struggled against the previous seasons against them but we did really well in that and my play this season so far is no other than the White Pele, Elliot Lee. He's been brilliant. What more can I say? He's been absolutely brilliant. He's already in double digits for goals and assists. Overall, I'm very happy with our season so far. Could we have picked up points in some games where we've dropped them? I think definitely, but that's part and parcel of being in League 2. We can't expect as Rex and Funds to go out there and win absolutely every game. Some good results along the way, but like I said, there's a long way to go in this season. But the lucky thing is... There's three automatic promotion spots, so anything is possible. If we get a good six or seven wins, we could play a huge part in our promotion this season. But yeah, this upcoming month in December will be season-defining, in my opinion. We've got Swindon Town away, Walsall away, Newport at home in the space of nine days across that Christmas period. So there'll be no extra Yorkshire puddings for the Wrexham boys. And like I said, this could define our chances of getting that top three spot. It'll be big. It will be big. It's a big month ahead. That is my season recap so far for Wrexham OC. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, get down there and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Up the town.